The PPC shows the maximum combination of goods that can be produced from a given amount of resources and technology. So an important assumption which we have to make in this case is that resources are being fully and efficiently used along all points on the curve. And that curve is the PPC which we'll see in a bit. So let me just draw the PPC out in this case. So we're to take a point, for example, let's say point A. And we were to take a point B on the PPC. So both points A and B are equally efficient. And there is no sort of efficient, I mean, there is an efficiency loss when you use the slope of the PPC. And this can also be the boundary if you look at it in another way. So we'll see what concepts are illustrated by the PPC primarily. So the first concept which is shown by the PPC is scarcity. So as you can see, we have this boundary, this red line is a boundary, right? So if it gives us the maximum possible combination of goods and services that can be produced at any given point in time, any given economy. So we can't really produce beyond the PPC at the given point in time. And so this is the boundary which we are restricted by. Now the second concept is choice. So this choice arises because of the need to select one of the many options of the boundary. So let's just say that these goods on the Y axis represent capital goods. These are your capital goods. And goods on the X axis are represented by consumer goods. Right. So the X axis represents consumer goods and the Y axis represents capital goods in this case. So get this. Yeah. So the thing is, since we can only produce so much, for example, at point A, let's just say that we are producing um, 10 capital goods and at the same time we are producing around, um, let's just say three consumer goods, right? So this is one combination. This is one possible combination because the production possibility curve gives us the different possible combinations given the amount of technology in the economy. And point B is another point. So for example, let's just say this is three. So you can produce three capital goods and around 10 consumer goods in this case. 10 consumer goods and three capital goods. So this is point B. This is another point at which we can't produce. So we have this choice. If you want to produce more consumer goods, right? If you want to produce more consumer goods, then that is only possible if we produce less capital goods. And if we want to produce more capital goods, we can only produce more capital goods by, by producing less consumer goods. So this is the choice which an economy has to make. Now the third concept, which is directly related to choice is opportunity cost. So opportunity cost is basically the cost of the next best alternative. So in this case, let's just say that we choose A, right? And when we choose A, what we are giving up is point B. So choosing A means that we are giving up point B, which in this case might just be equally, I mean, it is equally efficient, but it's the choice that we got to make. So A, we choose A instead of B. So there is an opportunity cost in this case. Because we, because now in this case, when we move from A to B, we are produ producing more consumer goods. And that is only possible by producing less capital goods. Or if you were to move from B to A, now we are producing more capital goods and less consumer goods. And that is only possible by producing less consumer goods as I just stated right now. And so this is the choice that we have to make. And this choice leads to this opportunity cost because we are giving up something. So whenever we give up something in place of some other thing, so let's say if you're giving up a, not this A, but let's okay, let's just take like Y and X. So if you're giving up X to produce Y, right? So this X is the opportunity cost because you could have just produced X, but now you're choosing to produce Y. And so the reason why you're choosing to well produce Y, that leads you to give up X. And so X is the opportunity cost in this case. So these are the three different concepts which are shown by the PPC or illustrated by the PPC. Now moving on to the last part, the last part is the slope of the PPC. 
I'm just gonna erase everything over here just to make this diagram more neat. Okay, let's remove this. Now the slope of the PPC is known as MRT, which is the marginal rate of substitution. Sorry, marginal rate of transformation. So MRT, which is the marginal rate of transformation. It's just a fancy way to identify the slope, right? And this slope illustrates the principle of opportunity cost as we just discussed right now. Because it shows the scarcity resources which leads us to make some choice. And whenever we make a choice, we are giving up something to produce more of another thing due to this boundary, which we are restricted by, which leads to opportunity cost. Because as I just discussed, as you want to produce consume more consumer goods, you got to give up more capital goods or the other way around. So this basically represents opportunity cost in this case. The slope is known as a marginal rate of transformation, which represents opportunity cost because you are giving up something to produce another return. This is your opportunity cost. And the way to calculate the gradient of let's say any curve is by drawing tangents because the gradient keeps on changing. And we will look into this later on when we discuss the different shapes of the PPC about how um, the shape of the PPC is like this or why there are different shapes, shapes of the PPC depending on the opportunity cost. Because in this case, we are assuming that the opportunity cost, I mean, I don't think it's really worth going into it right now because we'll discuss this in the next video or it'll just become more complicated. So let's just check to this right now. So if you want to calculate the gradient, let's say at point A, which is going to be the marginal rate of transformation, this is just a fancy word to identify the gradient in this case, we'll have to draw a tangent in this case. Okay, this one isn't a tangent, but let's just say it touches over here, right? So this will give you the gradient or the marginal rate of transformation at point A. And this will give you the marginal rate of transformation at point B if I can draw a proper tangent, which this is not, but it does fulfill the point. So we can get the MRT at point B and the gradient keeps on changing since it's a curve and there is a reason behind that, which we'll discuss in the video about different shapes of the PPC. So that's pretty much it from this video because we have covered opportunity cost concepts illustrated by the PPC, which includes the boundary, which is, well, your scarcity in this case, because you can't produce every single thing. At the same time, we discussed choice. We discussed opportunity cost, which is brought about by the existence of choice in this case. And then we discussed MRT, which is a slope of the PPC, which gives us the value for opportunity cost. For example, in this case, if we are giving up, let's just say, um, one capital good to produce, not in this case, not in this diagram, but in some other case, if you're giving up one capital good, one capital good to produce two consumer goods on point A, on some point on the curve to produce two consumer goods. So in that case, what's going to happen is that since you're giving up something to produce another thing, that's your opportunity cost, right? Because you're giving up something and the value will be one over two of the gradient. So M, which is the gradient in this case, let's just assume at some point on the PPC is going to be one over two. So that's pretty much it from this video.